So welcome everyone to the sixth community call. Yeah, we've been starting to do this like almost for half a year. It's impressive. We're super happy about this. Uh, last month we released Warden. It was a big step for us because it's a new DAP. It's, uh, it's a new uh, way for us to develop and we're happy that the community has received this really well. Um, just Alejandro, can you switch the slide please? Yeah, just uh, before this, uh, we are trying to do a huge step forward before having anything like a token transferable in the sense that we want to hand over more and more power to the community. It's not that easy to do a full decentralization from the get-go because you would need to do an on-chain system. And we are aware that currently on-chain participation is complicated because of gas prices. So what we're doing is that we're slowly going to create contributor groups that are going to be empowered with small parts of the responsibility of the Paladin DAO. We're starting by the transferability event, and we're super proud to have this uh, list of uh, really uh, dedicated community members and uh, crypto, actually crypto contributors in general uh, that join us. Uh, so Will, Diddy Moon, Jake Lynch, Salome, Fig, that's not me, it's another Fig, and T Tomo from uh, our core team who's also joining to help uh, and do the interaction with the core team. Uh, Will was elected uh, internally by the group as the 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 chairman of this group, which means he's more or less going to organize uh, the transfer B event and, and lead the initiative. Uh, I think, unfortunately, he couldn't join us. So uh, we won't be able to hear from him this time, but he'll probably be there in the next contributor call, which is probably next week. OK, so yeah, congratulations to them. We're glad to have you guys on board. And I'm going to hand it off to Valentin and Koga to talk about, uh, well, the state of Paladin this month, which was really nice. Hey everyone, uh, hope everyone is doing well. Yeah, so uh, February was a, a good month for the protocol, especially for the the stake of Apple, the the main one, we'll say. Uh, so with the market going up and down and all that happens, we are also already so like a, a lot of deposits. Uh, the proposal threshold on the Aave governance is going up. We reach over twenty percent of the proposal threshold, so it means more and more. Uh, governance pool available in the pool up to a point where we hope we can reach the, the inflection point and have some uh, really use, useful uh, use cases and, and loans and all of those. So uh, we'll just uh, keep working on that and keep uh, seeing those those pool grow bigger and, and better. And next slide, please. Uh, so yeah, with the the liquid mining going on, this is a bit of view of uh, how the pool were doing uh, from the get-go, because you can see like stake Ave is uh, always going up. We saw like a good uh, good progression the, this last month. Uni has also had a bit of progression, but not that much, and the other ones uh, don't have uh, that much uh, activity, but it will, it will get there. We, are, we still have uh, hope and, and have things ready for those pools, so it's just getting there, just Lacking a little bit compared to the the, the stake of a one, but because of the how powerful and how usable it is on other protocols, the stake of a one, of course, is having like a a great month. And let's fix. Yep. So um, as you guys can see. We had a very successful stake have pool. We think the auto compounding is playing a big effect in this because it's the comfiest place you can be when you're a stake have a holder and you're not participating in governance right now. We realized that there was a huge opportunity for us because there's a problem currently in the safety module uh, in the way it's done in the sense that the yields are redirected to the contract where the stake have is, which means that if you deposit stake have in any contract that does not claim the safety module yield for you, you're basically relinquishing it. You're not getting it ever. This means that Paladin, the wrapper we have, can be a solution for this. And if you use the PAL stake AVE instead of simple stake AVE, you're basically earning the safety module yield plus whatever you yield you're doing for the deposits, which means that the PAL stake AVE has an opportunity to, be, to become the liquid wrapper for stake AVE, which is a 500 million big uh, token, which it's a huge thing. So this is probably why there's a constant growth on the protocol. And uh, on top of the auto compounding, we can probably do a lot of things. We did an integration with APY, which is super interesting. I saw yesterday you could have 72% yield on it. 
uh, we're doing a new one. We seeded a, a curve pool, a curvy to a pool between Ave and, and Palstake Ave. Why did we do that? Uh, we realized there was a Uniswap pool, a Uni V3 pool between Ave and Stake Ave, which enabled people to reach, uh, to uh, to go quickly out of the safety module in Ave, because you know you need 10 days of cooldown before going out. So instead, you can have a bit of slippage and use Uniswap. That's cool. The problem is that all of the LPs that are doing that, they're really quishing their safety module for to get the LP fees instead. So we thought, what if we created a pool with our wrapper instead? which would mean that you could have the safety module yield plus the LP feeds. So that's why we're creating, we created this pool. The reason why we did it on curve is that we think that if we actually have a gauge, this will create another la layer uh, of yield on top of it. Plus it means that we can use Warden with it. That's the thing. And uh, what's really interesting is that it's a no, uh, there is no impermanent loss like most uh, pools. For one simple reason, is that the cooldown make uh, the the mechanism for the safety module re, uh, allows you to re, uh, to get one stake ave for one ave, which means that even if you have the pool that is in balance, you will always be able to get back your all your aves. There is no loss that's possible this way unless you choose to do one-sided liquidity uh, uh, removal. Something that's really uh, that's like the only leak I will do today. I will try. We're working with something called Babylon Finance. I don't know if you guys know them. They're a yield aggregate, uh, a strategy uh, creator for uh, yield strategies on, on DeFi. We're working with them to do what we call uh, the hexagon strategy, which is in a few months, going to uh, not even a few weeks, going to be able to deliver six year layers of yield. So first, you're going to have the safety module yields. Second, you're going to have the paladin fees. Then you're going to have the Paladin liquidity mining, you're going to have the Babylon liquidity mining, you're going to have the curve LP fees, and on top of it, once we have a gauge, you're going to be able to have the curve, the CRV gauges, which means that holding Pulse Take Ave will be a very lucrative opportunity, even without the impermanent loss. The only thing you're going to have is a smart contract read. That's why we were extremely excited about this pool. So the pool is already live, it has been live for a week. We see the it as a core team. The problem we have is because we don't have a CoinGecko uh, price feed right now, we, it's not working on the interface. You have to interact with it on the smart contract level, which we know is a hassle. So we're working, uh, we've been spamming CoinGecko for the past two weeks to get it listed. It should be there soon. So yeah, that's why we're super excited about this pool. And the rest of uh, Paladin's... Uh news all the, the paladin protocol we uh, want to do some adjustment in the in liquidity mining uh, a post uh, for that was uh, is on the form right now uh, as uh, stated in the last pgp around liquidity mining we're going with uh, optimism uh, governance on that kind of system so there is a post explaining what the changes we we want to do uh, during this week you can react on the post and then when the vote will be up like something in the next 24 hours you can uh, show uh, if you disagree with that. If there's enough disagreement, we'll uh, cancel cancel the, the the changes or do not not apply the changes actually, and uh, and have a discussion to to find a better better parameters. But what we want to do uh, for that month for the adjustment is reduce a little bit the the uni pool rewards since uh, it's not showing uh, as much growth as it's supposed to be with the the amount of reward that was. Uh, a load to that pool, so reduce it to fifty uh, thousand pounds a month. Uh, not changing the other uh, spread rewards on the other pools, so keeping the, those code uh, the same. But uh, since we don't see that right now, the pool are too low to see uh, meaningful uh, borrows and having uh, useful rewards on those. We'll just uh, remove them temporarily. Uh, use the the part token as well uh, allocated for those to just extend the the campaign by a month, and uh, the the allocated like the the rewards that were reduced from the uni pool will be uh, used and allocated uh, something like 20k per month for uh, other parts of integration. So mainly the the curvy two pool we just discussed about that we would really like to to uh, incentivize when it's getting up and re and ready on on the interface and having something having the go and all to have like a so that users that want to use the sparse CKV in the curve V2 pool instead of uh, staking them still get some uh, PAL rewards 
on on top of that. So uh, yeah, the discussion is is up in the forum. Like the the post is there explaining all, having a little bit of uh, graphs to to show why, and react to that one. Uh, po uh, proposal will be live soon. If you want to show disagreement on on that, like feel free to to go and uh, and yeah, we can go to the next slide. I think. Uh, on the the state of our the Paladin token in itself and the application governance, with uh, the end of the DR drop it concluded, we get uh, eight hundred and fifteen thousand uh, pounds that were returned to the community treasury, and as uh, stated in previous PGP, will be used uh, to bootstrap the DRBP and the, the transferability of the token. So right now, current circulating supply is around one point one million. And half of it is being delegated either to some uh, of our awesome delegates in the governance or to our self-delegated, so users can participate on their own. So that's really cool to see participation. We had like a huge participation on the last vote for PGP5 and stuff. That's, that was really exciting for us to to witness. And let's continue in that in that thread, guys, and keep having like a that awesome governance we have right now. All right. Well, thanks for that, Goga. And so we just want to go over the state of the Paladin, the stats in terms of community and our growth there. So um, as you, most of you, if not all you know, that the airdrop ended last week and we ended up in total with 1,085 PAL wallet holders. And that's, of course, for, as you all know, for a non-transferable token. So pretty, pretty cool. Um, very bullish. It, we also have now 3,229 Twitter followers, an average of 21 new followers per day, and that's 633 in the past month, so very glad to see that as well. And uh, in regard to Discord followers, uh, we actually had an increase since the last call of about 100 or so. Um, so yeah, we're growing on that front too. Uh, we're still playing behind the scenes, for example, other initiatives like marketing to get the word out, which will bring more users but uh, things are looking very great on that front. And that's for you, Fee. Yeah, so now let's talk about Warden. Uh, Warden has been live for a little bit less than a month, I think three weeks. It has been a wild ride because we decided to release it in a, a bourbon version to see how the community would react and what we could improve on. We needed a lot of feedback because, again, it's something that's entirely new. We're extremely impressed by the impressed by the reception. We've had a ton of people uh, asking questions. We have a ton of people giving feedback. Ton of people showing us how they could use it. Uh, today, there's all, uh, over 4.7 million VCRV that are under management. So people who put up boost sales. That's huge, guys. It means we have over 16 million dollars of VCRV that can be sold as boost. It's crazy, and the 3.6 million of them are available right now for around 98 offers. This is big. It's really big. Um, we have a bit less that have been sold because we need to bootstrap the use case. We have to prove to people it's a lucrative thing. And that's what we're focusing on a lot. Uh, initially, one of the problems we had is that when we created a market price, we were not communicating enough about uh, what should be the right price or it. Also because we didn't really know. It's complicated. So the mean price has been going down. And uh, we now know that the optimal price in, is under 5.2% APR a year. That's where it becomes lucrative for people to actually LP and borrow them. Uh, right, right now we have three VBOOs that were purchased. We're doing negotiations with some several large DAOs and uh, to, uh, to have them start using Warden in their strategies directly. Uh, I do think some whales will start waking up pretty soon because today you have a huge arbitrage in the sense that the lowest, uh, you have something like five, half a million VCRV that's available to buy for 2% APR, which is quite cheap. And the idea is the market is slowly going to start equilibrating themselves. And I'll be honest with you guys, if people think Warden is not good, I, I don't care. I'm just going to farm you, uh, farm them myself. I haven't done it yet, but uh, we're going to start farming ourselves Warden, uh, with Warden because it's lucrative, simply. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it for the basic stats. Uh, we're going to show you a bit what we have done this uh, this month on Warden. We release a lot of things, and we have a lot of others in store. Cool. So we received feedback and we listened. Uh, so one of the issues we had was uh, 
uh, a lot of the boosts were being sold at a very high price. So what we did to fix that is we added some price suggestions. So, you know, that, so it'll help make it a better market, uh, just give a fair price. This helps, this also helps sellers that are pretty new at this because it, it kind of gives them a hint of what price you put, right? Not just put like, oh, I'm just gonna put the highest price. So this is helpful for both buyers and sellers. Um, we also integrated a multi-buy system. Now this is a double whammy because this this helps uh, more complex strategies. And in addition to that, it also helps novice users as well. Uh, for one, because the multi-buy system is very simple. It, you, it, you could even argue it's a lot easier to interpret than individually buying a uh, individual V boost. And it also allows for complex strategies because instead of buying one boost at a time, uh, that's essentially automated for you. So, you know, so this is what we have so far, but there's more to come. If anyone has suggestions, uh, please let us know. Any, any feedback is welcome. Okay, now let's talk about governance. There's two proposals we want to talk about. The first one is the big one. It's about making the token transferable. So the way we designed uh, the token transferability event is that we want the community to be empowered and uh, decide how this is going to happen and elect a committee to execute it and uh, to do the negotiation. So talk to the right people. The community, basically all of us, have to decide what's going to be the strategy uh, on how we're going to, to make that uh, token transferable. So uh, what's the budget? What's the timeline? What kind of technology do we want to use? And uh, uh, ideally, what's the goal? What we suggested as the core team was allocate a million pounds to it, uh, elect a committee, to, a committee to manage this, do an LBP, and use the proceeds of the LBP to create a huge curve V2 pool. And our idea is that uh, the Paladin DAO should own most of the LP tokens that are going to be live, which means that we're going to benefit from speculation. Most of you know I'm not the biggest fan of speculation. What we're trying to create is a participation economy, but speculation is a very important part of crypto. And I think that if we're able to harness it with protocol-owned liquidity, it might create a very sustainable thing. And that's extremely important for us because if we become sustainable, we can find a lot of ways to uh, to use the the profits. And the first one being literally paying contributors to to have the DAO keep uh, keep going. And that's something that's very important for us. Uh, some small detail is that this POL will be extremely uh, create a positive feedback loop for us because at a zero price or even at a positive price, it would mean that we could. Uh, take uh, become the biggest customer of Warden and something else we have in source for you. So this means that if we have the right gauge, we can probably with our POL uh, just borrow, I don't know, let's say uh, uh, several uh, several tens of hundred or hundreds thousand of VCRV, even probably millions every week or, or for a long duration and uh, uh, just use the CRV proceeds to keep buying Warden, uh, to keep buying uh, boosts which is something we're tremendously excited about. The last detail is that we're going to announce the tokenomics, the big, the higher higher view of them just before the LBP, because we think it's important that if people want to buy tokens, they have to know why. So that's probably the big announcement we'll make at the end of the month. And we're going to try to, we're going to, try to uh, go a bit harder on, on, uh, on marketing. So you'll probably hear more of us uh, like this month. So yeah, that's about it for PGP6. Uh, the last one that's important is about constitution. We did a draft a few months ago and we didn't talk much about it. We'd like to re-talk about it. If you guys have objections, please feel free to express them now. If not, we're going to try and get the constitution voted before doing the LBP. So there are six articles about neutrality, pseudonymity, transparency, financing, decentralization, and the way we can interact with this constitution vote. There's a special type of votes that needs 20% of uh, quorum of circulating supply to be added, which allows, which are called PCM and modify this constitution. So yeah, that's the basic around governance right now. Okay. Yeah, awesome. As guys, you can see, there's a lot coming down the pipeline. Uh, we've been running full and uh, Q1 is, as we kept on saying, it's gonna keep on staying busy. 
Um, so contribute framework status update. Um, so right now for the month of January, uh, we had three squires level up to wanders. Congrats, guys. And two that uh, went the distance and level up to warriors. So uh, fantastic. And guys, if you're interested in, in leveling up, uh, there's the link. It's also in our in our um, level up channel in our Discord. And the POW form is sent out on the last Friday every month. Uh, we are also currently working on changes to the contributor framework, which we'll reveal in due time. Bounties. So uh, part dialification and very important is bounties. So uh, we've been uh, looking at different platforms and testing out which bounties and talking about, you know, which will be good to start off with and moving forward. We ultimately, of course, want this, just like everything else on the DAO, we want this to be controlled by the community. Um, but some examples of bounties that we have, Dune Dashboard for Warden, that was asked, uh, create Denver-themed Paladin art for Eve Denver, community scribe for notes, so for example, this call would be a perfect opportunity for that, uh, and create a Pal Paladin Discord banner. Uh, there are others that we are discussing behind the scenes, and details on how it will all function is coming soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And of course, uh, a fan favorite, Poaps. If you attend this call, you receive a Poap directly from me. Um, keep your eyes on the chat, and please, please make sure, because this happened last month, that you mint them by February 12th. If you do not do so, they are expired. Um, so please mint them in the next 48 hours. And now we reach the AMA section of our call, and this is where we'll take our, or your community call questions. Yeah, uh, we had like some from yesterday, or today, depending on time zones, from E231, like two nice questions, actually. On uh, the ex uh, instead of delegate number, like large p vote pools on Paladin, what's happening on swinging votes outcome. So just a quick uh, uh, recap on how the, those our pools work, because uh, there, there are some other protocols that are using votes and like voting with the voting the proposal the voting power uh, while the proposal is active, so they can swing votes and they have like the bribing system or, or what or what not to do so. While in Paladin, we believe that uh, you should prepare before the proposal and uh, get the voting power beforehand before the snapshot is taken. So uh, the uh, the end game for for the pools is to to be large enough so uh, big loans of voting power cost less than they they could do if you're trying to to take all the the, the pools voting power because it's uh, like the interest is paid depending on the utilization rate of the pool. So the end game is, yeah, as if the pool is big enough, like loans getting get more interesting for users and they can, all of them can prepare before and before the vote is happening. Like they know how much voting power they'll need and take loans and, and everything. So instead of having like big pools that can be dangerous for the, for the protocols because it's a huge amount of voting power that can be swung during the vote because someone paid for it, you before the, the the vote is live, you know who's amassing voting power and who's getting loans uh, behind those. So that that that's the vision we have for the pools. And then he had like expanding on the question. Uh, yeah, if some uh, protocol goes to the this, uh, against the same uh, type of voting power uh, that uh, Paladin does inside the, in their pool, uh, is uh, who gets the most votes gets the most chance to swing a vote? Like here, it's also the same thing. Like those protocols that go for the same token but use those to to swing votes uh, can be like uh, hurting protocols they they work they they're trying to work with where I, we just want to like bring the more uh, voting power into the pool so people can can access it but uh, in a more structured and secure way we have girl rails we discussed with uh, some protocols and governance system uh, about how to have like those good guardrails and how to to make sure that it, this cannot be used in uh, in any way to to hurt uh, governance processes. So if, even if uh, other protocols go for after the same uh, kind of assets and, and voting power, well, we believe that the the way we built it, we we could we should stand out as the the most neutral and uh, uh, type of uh, tool. In, the, in that sense, not like we, we want to be the biggest one because we want to be the one that swings the vote. We just want to bring tools and opportunities to people that, that might want to swing a vote, but to do so in a way that everybody has, has an eye on it and they can see loans going on and they, they are, they'll they pay on uh, interest rate instead of uh, just putting bribes. And that's why you, you use the same uh, token that 
the, uh, less, like for example Ave to to pay on the Ave pool because you want to be exposed to the the governance that you you're trying to to impact. So you're you're gonna have to to buy Ave and give Ave to the the holders of the voting power if you want to to use this instead of having to pay bribes or whatnot in in stable coin or in other assets that can be dangerous. I think, Koga, there's also a question on uh, liquidity mining for Warden. Um, did we answer it enough during the call, or do you want to talk a bit more about it? Uh, yeah, so we have uh, plans for a little bit of uh, liquidity mining on Warden also. like There was an ongoing discussion on the forum for a gas refund for the people that uh, put up offers. So we are currently... Uh, Checking out what would be the, the best uh, system to implement to do so and have like something efficient on both the seller and the buyer sides. So we are getting something ready. We'll be able to, to present it to you in a, uh, soon enough and I hope, hope to have your, your feedback on that so we can have reached something really interesting there and it be useful for both uh, all of the Warden users and bring uh, Warden to the next level. Yeah, guys, feel free if you have any more questions. Uh, but what Koda said is super important in the sense before uh, talking about liquidity mining, that the big difference is going to be that our DAO is neutral. We do not touch the governance token. Our job is just to create a marketplace for our governance. It's nothing more. And the big difference is that there is no bias. So when you have people that uh, take your governance power, they they want to do something with it, like it, it, it can... Uh, create dangerous uh, vectors of attack. We, we don't want to do this. So I think it's something that's really important uh, with Paladin. Any more questions? This is your time, guys. Mm, looking around, I don't see anyone typing in general or community. Um, I think that will make the call. Yeah, let's just wait one minute if someone else has a question. If not, we, we can stop there. So thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you had your feel of uh, info and leak about the, the DAO. Lots of things are going on. I think uh, this is going to be a huge month as uh, we're slowly creating use case for Warden. We're seeing Paladin Lending, especially the stake AV pool take off. The Curvy pool is going to be a big player in that. And uh, yeah, we're really happy about uh, the way it's been developing. And uh, we're going to end uh, the month with a cherry on the cake with the LBP. I think that's the, the biggest bull case, bull case we can have. Thank you. Rufi. Thanks, BL. Appreciate it. MDuck, Joe Kemler. Oh. You're welcome, Nelson. Okay, Sancho, yeah. All right, yeah, I'm going to wrap up the call now, guys. Uh, thanks again for joining. Uh, yeah, Figa said we have a lot of stuff going on, and uh, all of us are going to be together in Denver by next week. So uh, we're really excited. Um, and like you mentioned before, please hit us up if you are in Denver. We would love to chat, meet you, uh, all that fun stuff. All right, take care, guys, and thanks.